Okay, I want you to listen closely because I've got another great man of God with us, Pastor Donnie Hutto from Atlantic Beach Assembly of God. And God is doing great, great things at his church here. And let me tell you, as we before we get started, about this pastor, he walks with a humility that's obvious and you can feel it, but he has a strong anointing on his life. And you know, that reminds me of the Lord because he was humble and gentle in spirit, but of course the Lord's anointed. And that's our pastor, Pastor Donnie Huto here. So, Pastor, it's I'm a joy sure to have you with thank us today. You. Thank so glad you. you're with us today. It's a joy, Pastor, and thank you for allowing me to be with you today. Uh, as I'm sitting here thinking of these great men of God, Pastor Jim, I've known him for many years, Pastor Arley, yes. yourself. It's an honor to be here and to be a part of what God is doing. Yes. And I appreciate so much your offer. Oh, he's doing a lot. Of, Amen. He's doing a lot at Amen. Atlantic Beach. Now, how long have you been pastor there? We just celebrated 20 years in April. Wow, that's 20 great. years, which um, I used to think was a long time, but I'm the newbie <laughs> on this, uh, this crew today, you know. So there's some great uh, advantages we were mentioning earlier of just long-term yes. pastorates. Yes, uh, so much. Being able to see... Uh, the transformation in lives. Yes. Uh, people come in and uh, to watch what God does as He transforms often from youth on up or sometimes even adults as God just transforms lives and families. Yes. And that's a big part of what what God is, is doing is, is families. Yes. Um, I believe that families are under a great attack today. Uh, yes. uh, probably greater than at any other generation. And uh, the enemy wants to destroy the families because Jesus Christ used the family to exemplify the relationship between himself and the body of Christ. And so the devil hates that. Yes. Uh, and he wants to destroy that. But God is in the restoration business. Yes, and yes. every year, uh, our prayer is that we see more families restored than destroyed. And uh, we're seeing that. We're seeing God do uh, mighty things of restoration in, uh, in families, uh, you know, wives just falling back in love with their husbands, oh, and husbands yes. falling back in love with their wives, and, and and children lining up in the order of God. So that's exciting. And that's you, Pastor. Yeah. Uh, you have a, a pastor's heart, and you minister to families like that, and you've seen incredible things happen. And that's why I was so excited you could be with us today, because, again, people are listening today and watching. And their, their, their families are broken, right. and the marriages are broken. And maybe you could speak a little bit, first of all, about marriages, because I'm telling you, it, the divorce rate is skyrocketing, and so many hurt. And people get into the point, they don't even have hope anymore. They don't know what to do or where to turn. Maybe you could just briefly give us a starting point for some couple, some precious woman or man who's watching, and they don't know what to do. Yes. Tell us. Well... I uh, absolutely, uh, Pastor, and I would like to say that the church is exempt from those kind of problems. But it's just simply not. No, uh, we live in a real world, right? And and families struggle, and they have issues. Um, uh, wives have issues, and uh, relationships, and, and we have just uh, we've had key people in our church that have struggled in that area. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's kind of immersed us; it's broken our heart. Yes. Uh, in, in prayer for families, we do some things specifically for that. We try to have some uh, family structured classes and, and, and oh, teach like good. the five love languages and some basics of, of that sort of thing. Um, the enemy, is, I was reading this morning in, in my devotional time uh, in Numbers, and, and just something jumped out. The Bible said that Caleb had a different spirit about him, Numbers 14, 24. Mm -hmm. And they talked about that because of that, he wholly followed God and that he would inherit his land, or that he would possess his land and his descendants would inherit it. Mm -hmm. And when I read that, I, it just had come alive and struck in my spirit that our children can only inherit what we possess. That's good. Uh, That's you, you know, good. you can't inherit what the previous generation doesn't possess. That's so good. And, and, and I'm afraid that in so many ways, uh, mm -hmm. we've handed our children kind of a bad rap. Yeah. You know, we've handed them a prayerless school system. We've handed them uh, just problem after problem. And I believe that God is restoring the strength and the structure of families yes. so that, that we can see, that we can pass down. Uh, you know, I've, I've preached before, but uh, the reason David had to go out and face the Goliath was because all the adults in his life were hiding in tents. And, that's and, and, and the youth yeah. today are dealing with issues yeah. uh, because our generation 
uh, failed to appropriately deal with them, Pastor. So, yeah. uh, but it all boils back down to the the structure, uh, I believe, of of a husband and wife, and setting that uh, perimeter in the house. Uh, that, that kids can feel that love and acceptance and learn to be nurtured in the things of the Lord. Yeah, so in a marriage, you know, you have a husband and wife and there's ebb and flows and, you know, right. difficult times. But, but love is more than just a feeling, isn't right. it? Yes. I mean, it's a commitment. Amen. And you offer classes like the love languages and other things, I know you do, that really can help people. And uh, I'm sure you do pre, uh, uh, spiritual guidance for couples and help them. So that's huge. And then with the family, like you said, you know, without Christ and the family broken, there's nothing to pass down. Right. And you see it out there in Atlantic Beach, probably uh, maybe even even more intense than other areas of town with technology and the kids getting wrapped up in all kind of perversion right. and evil. Yes. Well, Mayport, Atlantic Beach and, and Mayport Corridor, mm -hmm. uh, our church is, is right there on the Mayport Corridor, okay. uh, is... is we're just a couple of miles from Mayport Military Base. Uh, so you've got a lot of young men, sometimes from the first time away from home, 18, 19 years old. Yeah. Uh, and of course, the enemy's rampant. He's, he's offering everything in the world out there for them to, to sample. And uh, so, so that corridor is, is really a, uh, attacked hard. Uh, you know, we, we pray over it. There are times I just drive down Mayport Road and just pray over the, that corridor. Yeah. Um, but yes, you're absolutely right. Our community, I don't know that we're that much different than a lot of other communities that uh, as far as technology, it's really invaded all of our yes, lives. Right, right. And um, uh, however, uh, it's, it's as real there as anywhere. And, and there are temptations and, and people trying to experiment with things that, uh, that, are, that are detrimental and harmful. You're such a lighthouse in that area. And you also minister to the, a lot of Navy people, don't you? And we may have some Navy people watching today. Yes. And like you said, you know, they're away from their family. Right. And boy, the devil can come in and take them on a right. bad trip there, can't they? Right. Yes. So, uh, do you have a, a lot of Navy people? We we, we have um, we have a, a good percentage of our congregation is, is military. It used to be uh, the bulk of our congregation. We've had a lot of military that have actually retired or finished their uh, their time and have just stayed with the church yeah. uh, and they're still with us today uh, because of the military I, I received a letter uh, not long ago of a young man that was in our church just for a very short time actually from his his uh, mother and uh, that, that he had been really straying and he joined the military mm -hmm. and uh, was stationed at Mayport mm -hmm. again 19 years old he came to our church, gave his heart to the Lord. We were so excited yeah. uh, to see that transformation. Um, and and then in a short time, within two years, he was transferred away. And unfortunately, you lose contact. Yeah, right. uh, things happen. And so um, I received a letter from, from his mom that just wanted to thank our church and our ministries that he had given his life to the Lord. He's now become a youth pastor. Yeah. Uh, his sister has, has become a missionary. Wow. And this family was one of those families that had fallen apart and, and had uh, really fallen away from the Lord but because God touched a life, a young man. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I used to really resent <laughs> the transitional nature right. of our community mm -hmm. uh, because, you you know, the pastor, and you know right. this, you, you fall in love with people. Yes. And uh, and then they get moved away, mm -hmm. and, and, right. and it affects you. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've learned to embrace that as part of our calling, yeah. uh, that we speak into the people sometimes for a season, yeah. And sometimes they move on. So, uh, yeah, our military is a big part of, of our community, and we, we love our military. Well, tell us what your actual address is there. It is uh, 680 Mayport Road. Okay. So we're about a half mile north of Atlantic Boulevard. If you got off Atlantic Boulevard, as if you were headed to Mayport Naval Base, we're about a half mile down okay. on the left. And tell us when your service times are. We have an early service at 8.15 on Sunday morning, mm -hmm. and um, it's, a, it's a smaller service. It tends to be a little more traditional in nature. Okay. Uh, then we have uh, what we call real life groups, uh, which is basically the, the Sunday school format where we do Bible studies uh, at 9.30. Mm -hmm. And then at 10.45, we have our second, I guess our main service. Uh, it's a little more contemporary in, in nature. And, okay. and um, uh, then we have seven o'clock uh, Wednesday nights. Uh, Sunday evenings, 
uh, they're very diverse. Uh, yeah. Some some Sunday evenings we'll have uh, the first Sunday of every month we have just we just meet and pray. Yes. Uh, then then we have others where we use for some leadership training and different things. So Sundays has kind of Sunday evenings has kind of been in transition over the last few months. But uh, there's something for everyone. And then during the week we've got ladies meet there, you know, for for Bible studies and. Uh, moms groups meet there with babies. We've got all kinds That's of activities great. and events going on. Well, you've got great facilities. And, uh, you know, listening to us today, I'm sure you can feel and sense the pastor's heart here. And all the men of God with us today have that heart. And I want to encourage you. I'm speaking to someone who is in the Navy. And you know better. And you got caught up in some things that you shouldn't have got caught up in. And you're not attending church. Hey, listen, right down the road, you got a great church here, Atlantic Beach Assembly of God. And you need to see the pastor uh, this coming Sunday and say, Pastor, I, I, I heard, or you know, your wife maybe of a Navy person, you bring your family. We heard you on the broadcast, and we're here today, and we want to become a part of this church. Don't put it off any longer because the, you know, you get further and further away and the light gets darker and darker and darker and you're falling into the devil's trap. Isn't that right, Pastor? It's so true. And, uh, you know, again, we love, we love all uh, these young men starting out with families. Yeah. Um, and the military is just one example of that. And it's so hard. It's difficult. These guys are deployed six, eight, nine months at a time. Uh, you, you know, often yeah. small children at home. Yeah. Uh, we try to help fill where we can the void of family. Yes. You know, we're kind of a real, we're, we're, um, uh, we're, we're certainly not a, a real large church. We have a couple of other people worship with us, but mm -hmm. uh, we have a real family atmosphere. Everybody kind of loves one another. Yes. And, uh, you know, we have, uh, in fact, the um, uh, one of our ladies is one of the, uh, is the military ombudsman, which is kind of a coordinator for the Navy wives mm -hmm. uh, on, on base, and she attends with us. So she tries to reach out to these Navy wives that are, mm -hmm. and it could be a Navy husband where the, where the wives in the military, but yeah. uh, where they're separated for periods of time. I see. And we've been talking about the Navy a little bit, but of course you have a lot of sure. other people who are in the Navy. Absolutely. So any, if you're in that area at all, I want to encourage you. See Pastor Donnie and become a part of the church if you don't have a church home because God is doing great things there. And I, I just love the, the, the part about you, that pastor's heart where you, you reach out and you call people and you visit people and God has used you in a great way. And I know we're all just so thankful for you being there and what you do out there. Let's talk about just for a moment, you know, the end times, what the Spirit of God is doing in the end times. And do you feel like we're getting closer and closer? What do you feel like? about that pastor absolutely I don't feel there's any doubt that we're closer yeah uh, I mean the clock is 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 ticking and and it's only moving forward and what the devil is um, using now more and more what do you what do you what do you feel about that I, 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 again I believe that the enemy is throwing everything he's my son came home from work the other day and he had a conversation with uh, a co-worker about mm -hmm. uh, he had mentioned the word that's weird and the person said, well, you know, there's really nothing weird. Uh, and he said, well, yeah, there, there's some things that are weird. And she said, well, she said, well, to say weird, you've got to have a normal. And there's really no normal. And the, and, and the truth is, that's the society we live in. No absolutes. Uh, th there's right? no absolutes. Anything, if this person believes this way or feels this way, uh, wants to use this restroom or use that restroom or yeah, whatever, mess, yeah. uh, you know, it, that's normal. Yeah. And at least that's what society tries to teach us. We know that that's not the truth. Right. And, right. And, and I think most people at their core uh, have have a, a comprehension that that's just not accurate. Okay. Uh, but but the enemy is, has come in and he's tried to put that and push that. And uh, he's using that to destroy the fabric of society. But I believe that God uh, is in control, and, and and I'm not a defeatist. I don't believe no, we're losing God the battle, uh, yes. but I, I do believe that God is emboldening people today, and and He is calling a people. Uh, the, the Lord has been dealing with with our heart a lot in the area of faith at our church. Mm -hmm. That God, that the faith is the um, it's really the currency that we function in uh, in the kingdom of God. I mean, everything we do is by faith. We're saved yes. by faith. We're healed by faith. Uh, you know, we believe God. And so the faith becomes our currency. And the, and the disciples said, Lord, increase our faith. Yes. Um, and I don't care who you are. Uh, there are times that our faith comes under attack. Yes. And the enemy wants to, uh, and you can be a pastor, you can be just beginning in your walk with the Lord, um, but you will face something 
that will bring doubt. We face maybe a, a diagnosis of cancer or loss of job, mm -hmm. and uh, our faith comes under attack. So. Pastor, you are you are nailing it and speaking to people today who their faith has been diminished. They feel like giving up. And not only that, you've mentioned about our society and no absolutes. Well, I know you would agree with me. There's only one way to heaven, and it's through Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. He's the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody will get to heaven without Christ. And all these cults and isms out there are leading people astray in the New Age movement and all this mess. Can you take a moment, Pastor, and speak to those listening? They need their faith built up, and then there are others listening today who need Christ, Amen. and they need to renounce all that New Age Amen. mess and cults Amen. and get back to Jesus, Amen. because He is the way. So please take yes. a moment and speak. Amen. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There, there's a whole series of Jesus Christ being the completion. God in the Old Testament said, I am that I am. Uh, Jesus completed that sentence. And, and one way that he completed that sentence is that he said, I am the way, the truth, and life. I am the way to the Father. There is no other way but through me. Uh, but the beauty is that Jesus Christ has done the work. He's, he's paid the price. Yes. Uh, we, as, as people of God, uh, are we maybe not as people of God, those that are seeking a relationship with the Lord, and maybe you're lost, maybe you don't even know which way to turn, and, and churches in your mind become complicated and difficult, and uh, relationships with God, you've allowed the enemy to twist that, it's really the most simple thing we'll ever do, and that is surrender uh, our, our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ, and ask God uh, into our hearts, and, 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 and ask Jesus, he said, he that that asks us to forgive us of sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us of all sins. Uh, he said, I am uh, the Father. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. There are so many things that Christ desires to be. The enemy has come but to kill, mm -hmm. steal, and destroy. If you ever wonder what the devil's doing in your oh, life, boy. They, it, it summed up kill, steal, and destroy. Yes. But I'm glad that the verse didn't end there. John 10.10 10 says, But I have come that you might have life and have life more abundantly. So I would encourage you today, uh, if you don't know Jesus, uh, take a moment uh, and, and ask Jesus into your life. Maybe you do know Christ, but, but you've not been walking with Him and your relationship has been uh, not what it should be. Ask the Lord to strengthen that friendship. We, we've, uh, maybe you've got people in your life you've neglected friendships with and you know what it feels like when you're, you, you're not having that relationship. And, and that's kind of what it is with Christ. When we neglect that relationship, um, it becomes cold and stagnant. And, and God wants a personal relationship with each one of us. Yes. So you may be listening today and you hear what the pastor is saying. Have you given your heart and life to Christ? Really? Have you done that? What does it take to be saved? Well, it takes repentance, confessing our sins, and putting our faith and trust in Christ alone for salvation. There's no hope of heaven without Christ. And so we want to give you an opportunity, even now, to say a prayer to give your heart and life to Christ. Maybe you were like me and you didn't even know how to pray. Well, I'm going to help you today. I want you to pray with me. You can bow your head right there and pray with me. You can pray it out loud or you can pray it in your heart and mean it. And the Lord will hear you and you can be forgiven and be saved. So do you want Christ? Others, you're listening and you've drifted away. You ready to come home? Why don't you want to come now? Come now. Now's the night. Amen. Today's the day of salvation. Amen. So I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And you pray this prayer. The Lord will come and forgive you. You can start again. You can be saved. Pray this with me. Come on, right now, pray this with me. Pastor's going to pray it after me as well to help you, okay? Yes. Let's pray. Pray, dear God in heaven. Dear God in heaven. I come to you in Jesus' name. I come to you in Jesus' name. And Lord, right now, Lord, right now, I ask you, I ask you, please forgive me, please forgive me for my sins, for my sins. I've broken your laws. I have broken your laws. I've broken your commands. I have broken your commands. I'm guilty. I am guilty. But I ask for forgiveness. But I ask for forgiveness right now, right now. And Jesus, and Jesus, I invite you. I invite you. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. Be my Lord and Savior. I believe. I believe. You died on the cross. You died on the cross. And you rose from the dead. And you rose from the dead. And you're alive. And you are alive. And I put all my faith. I put all of my faith. And trust in you. And trust in you. And what you did for me on the cross. And what you did for me on the cross. Paying off my sin debt. Paying off my sin debt. So I could have eternal life. So I could have eternal life. 
In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I trust Hallelujah. you prayed that prayer with me. Praise Gave Lord. your life to the Lord. Listen, yes. it's a new day for Amen. you. It's a new start. The old is gone and the new has come. And you can call the broadcast if you like. You can see the number on the screen and talk to those counselors if you so choose to. But listen, it's a new day. Yes. Celebrate that. Tell somebody about your decision to follow Christ. And this coming Sunday... You better be in church because now it's time to grow strong Amen. in the Lord. And God has great things. You know, it's an adventure serving the Lord and it gets better every day. And Pastor Donnie is available for you at the Atlantic Beach Assembly of God. If you need any help or you have some questions, you give a call to him. You call the church office Amen. and they'll be there for you.